Hey everyone, welcome to Wake Up, where in this video we're going to learn what asynchronous programming is, why it is needed, and its specificity to JavaScript. So before we begin, what is asynchronous programming? So asynchronous programming is a programming technique that allows a program to respond to other tasks even while a long-running task has been started. In other words, the program does not have to wait for a long-running task to finish before doing other things. When the long-running task is finished, the result is available to the program. Common examples of long-running tasks are HTTP calls and database queries. And so before we dive deeper into asynchronous programming, let's talk about synchronous programming. And synchronous programming is a programming technique where the program is stepped through one line at a time in the order it was written. In synchronous programming, a following line of code is not touched until the one before it is completed. The following would be an asynchronous program. This is an asynchronous program because here the log statement will not be executed until the assignment of the string wit code to the variable name has completed. Synchronous programming can be very inefficient for tasks that require a long time to complete. The bigger the task, the longer it will take to complete. If a task takes a long time to complete, the program will be completely unresponsive to anything else until the long running task has completed. And so how does asynchronous programming help? Well, asynchronous programming solves the issue with synchronous programming by starting a long running task, returning from the task immediately so the program can continue, and then notifying the program with the result of the long running task when it completes. A common example of asynchronous programming is the use of event handlers. To better demonstrate this, let's create a button that prints hello wit code whenever it is clicked. So we have our button, and now whenever we click it, if we check the console, we can see hello wit code being printed. So we click it again, we get hello wit code. And so event handlers are asynchronous as waiting for the button to be clicked is a long running task. However, the program can still run even though it is waiting for a click or constantly looking out for a click. When the button is clicked, the task has completed, and the event handler, the function provided to the onClick method, which is this anonymous function here, is notified. And so event handlers are a type of callback function, and a callback function is a function that is passed to another function to be called when the function it was passed to is completed. Callback functions are not asynchronous by definition, but they are commonly used to respond to asynchronous operations. For example, the callback function we provided to the button on click here was asynchronous, but the callback function that um, let's define real quick is not an asynchronous function. So here, when task one is complete, the function supplied as an argument to it is called, which is the callback here. This is not asynchronous code, but we can see how it works well with asynchronous operations. Specifically, the callback function is called when the function it was provided to has completed. So once all this stuff here is completed, we call this callback function. However, things can get ugly and complicated when callbacks have callbacks, which have callbacks, and so on and this is referred to as the Pyramid of Doom. To combat the horror of nested callbacks, modern asynchronous APIs don't use callbacks, but instead they use promises. So promises are JavaScript's modern approach to handling asynchronous programming. A promise is an object returned by an asynchronous function 
that represents the asynchronous task's current state. The asynchronous task is often not completed when it is returned to the caller. Instead, it has methods to handle the eventual success or failure of the asynchronous operation. To demonstrate promises, let's make an asynchronous call using the JavaScript fetch API. So here, we are making a GET request to JSON placeholder, which is basically a free online REST API that provides fake data. And the fetch method is built into modern browsers, and what it does is return a promise. And we capture this promise inside the variable response, or RESP, and we log it to the console. And the value that it displays is a pending promise, which C is a common here, but also down here, we can see promise pending. So in other words, the asynchronous operation is still ongoing. However, as the fetch method returned a promise object instantly, we can continue the program. So we can see the asynchronous task is still pending, but the program continued. So even though the asynchronous task is still ongoing, which is fetching this data from the API, the program continued to the next line and logged program continuing. And so let's dive a little deeper into promises. So promises can be in one of three states, pending, fulfilled, or rejected. Previously, we saw a promise object in the pending state. When a promise is pending, this means it has been created, but the asynchronous task it represents has not completed yet. In other words, the asynchronous task has, ne has neither been fulfilled or rejected. When a promise is fulfilled, this means that the asynchronous operation was successful. When a promise is successful, the then method is called on it. So the then method takes a function as the first, where the first argument is the data returned from the successful asynchronous call. So we can see we have an anonymous function here with arrow syntax, and the first argument is data, which is what is returned from this asynchronous call. If we log the response, however, so the promise returned from the fetch API, we can see the state of the promise object is now fulfilled. So if we look down here, we can see promise fulfilled as opposed to pending. On the other hand, if an asynchronous operation fails, then its catch method is called. So here, our asynchronous operation is making a request to a different origin without the appropriate cores header set. And this causes a cores error, which rejects the promise. Inside the catch method, we can see the promise is rejected. So if we look here, we can see promise rejected, failed to fetch. But nowadays, um, we use the keywords async and await to write asynchronous code that basically looks like asynchronous code. But these are just a different way of working with promises and is also kind of beyond the scope of this video. But nevertheless, that was my video on explaining asynchronous programming. I want to thank you for liking and subscribing today, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Besides that, have a good one.